All right, hey everybody. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to use the application Stencil in order to make some cool 3D games. And when we are done, we will have a game that looks something like this. You try to dodge the bullets and then shoot them. There we go, and I get, you get them. Oh. There we go, you win. So it should be fun. Now let's see how we can go about doing this. Now the template that I am using here is from their Crash Course 2 on the Stencil website. And it's a good introduction to learn how Stencil works. And they give you several instructions here, but I just kind of want to give it some more context and make a few changes and add a few things on the end. So if you go to this website right here, I'll put the link in the comments, you want to download this zip file right here. And it should be very quick. And then just click down here and unzip it. And your game assets will open right there. So if you go inside, you can see a couple of pictures, which will be our character along with uh, some of the sounds and then some of the bullets and enemies and all of the elements that we need to make our game will be inside of this folder. So they give you the instructions here. So let's get started and I'm going to go into stencil and you will be brought to right here. And when you want to make a new game, just click create new game and it's going to be, you want to make sure it's a blank game. Go to next and call it what you want. It'll be similar to the one I made, so name it accordingly. Space Invaders, I will call it. And uh, we're gonna keep the width and height the same. And we're gonna create our game. And when you are brought into this screen right here, you will see this blank area and a little uh, section right here that has all of the things that we are going to need for our game. So the actor types, which are the characters, the backgrounds, which is what it looks like in back of whatever the characters are, the different text with fonts, uh, the scenes are the levels that are in the game, sounds are obviously sounds, the sound effects, tile sets we are not going to get into in this game. And these are the different types of things right there. And then we also have the behaviors, which we will also get into. Uh, but the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to import our actors. So if I go here, and right now this contain this game contains no actor types, uh, click here to create one, and that's exactly what I am going to do. So the first actor that we are going to get is going to be our main ship. So I am just going to call him ship, and then I am going to create it. And I am brought to this screen right here. And you can see up here that there was a little tab that opened. Whenever you get a new resource or a new behavior from your dashboard, it will open up in this tab. And you could, if I were to save it, I could just close out and, oh, it's not there anymore. But if I just go back, the tab will open right back up. And that's very useful. So the first thing that we want to do before we get it to move around or get controlled or anything is that we want to actually have a picture there. So I am going to click on that. And we have our different animations. And I'm. this is just the main one, so I'll call this default. And right now there is no frame in here, so if I click here to add a frame and then go up to choose image, I wanna import this image that I had and find the folder that you downloaded from Stencil. And where is it? What is it called again, I forget. CC2 game assets and the we want to get ship flying it will look like this there are four of them so I'm gonna open that up and you may say whoa four ships that's not what your game looked like Kevin that's that's absurd uh, this is what is called a sprite sheet and it allows us to add animations into the game uh, so if we go up here, you can see there's columns and rows. This will allow us to divide up our sprite sheet into different sections. So there's four different ships. So we want to make four columns. And you can see it splits everything there nice and easily. You also want to make sure that this is on 1x. If it's on uh, any of the other ones, it's going to make it smaller. 
So you don't want that. And now just add, and you can see we have all the animations right here. And then this is what it is going to look like. See our little, it's, it's uh, rocket is propelling it through space and it already looks good. So I am going to save it by going to command S. Boom. And now we have our ship in and we're just going to import the other character. So now I'm going to create a new actor type. I will call this one enemy ship. And this one contains no animations, but let's add it. And this one is going to be default too. And then I'm going to add the frame, choose the image. And it is, which one was it? Alien grabber, this guy right here. You can see there's only one of them. So we can keep it at one column, one row, because we don't need to split them up. I'm going to add him. And now we have our enemy ship as well. We are going to add one more um, character right now, and that will be our bullets. So I'm going to create those bullets. And I am going to get the animation. Fall. Add the frame. And the player dual shoot like that. Open those up. And this is a little tricky. You can't always tell. There are three columns there that should be there. It took me a little while to figure that out. Three columns. And you can see they are blinking all around and they look good like that. Now, so we have imported the images, uh, but we wanted to, we, uh, we want to add something else to these. We want to change the physics of them. We want to make sure that they are behaving like we want them to behave. So we want this to be normal. And we uh, do not want it to be able to be rotating. We just want to keep it straight ahead. And finally, this game is in space and we do not want a normal gravity effect on it. If you are making some kind of platform game where you wanted gravity to be, gravity to be exerted on your character, then you would click yes there. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing with all of these. No rotate, no gravity, <coughs> no, ro whoops, no rotate, and no gravity. Now, the final thing that we are, or not the final thing, but uh, for now, the thing that we are going to change about these is our groups. So groups allow you to, like, say you have an enemy and you have your main character and you want your character to die if it touches the enemy. You can program it so that like each time it touches this character, die, and then when another enemy, die, and then another enemy, die. But that can get a little tedious after a while. So what Stencil has is called groups, and you could put all of your different actors of that enemy into a group. So you could say, if your character hurts anyone from this group, do that. And we don't have a ton of characters in here, so it's not, uh, that necessary, but it is it is good to have and also helps with collisions. So actually it may be necessary now to think about it for a sec. So we want to switch the ship. We want to edit the groups first. So we have actors, doodads, players, regions, and titles. We're going to create a couple new groups and these can be whatever you want. So the we're going to create one and we're going to call this enemies. And we are going to create another one, and we are going to call this bullets. Create. Boom. And this is important here to have the collides with correct. So we want our bullets. We don't want them colliding with the enemies, but we do want them colliding with the players. The player is going to be the main ship that you control. The enemies, we want them colliding with the bullets. And then the players. We want them, there's no tails. We want them colliding with, we do not want them colliding with the bullets or else it will force them back. That would not be good. And that is all we have, correct? Yeah. So we have our players, enemies, and bullets. Our groups are good. And let's click OK. So now I am going to import a scene. I'm going to know this game contains no scenes. And we are going to, what are we going to do here? Uh, actually, that's not what I'm going to do. Let me go back to my instructions here and let's remember what we were doing. I kind of skipped ahead on a lot of these. So we imported our ship and we changed that and we changed it to players. Good. 
Uh, we got the collisions good. We got our enemy all set and the bullets imported. Oh, there we go. So yes, we are going to add a background. We're gonna create one and then we are going to import it. All right, so let's get a new one called stars. There we go, create. And then we're gonna add a frame, choose an image and then we are going to have this nice little space background with ominous red stars. And there it is. And I just want to add that. Perfect. And that will be the background for our game. So now we're going to add sounds. Yeah, cool. So there's two sounds in the game. And when I was making this on my own, the sounds that were provided um, in that zip file did not work for some reason I believe it had something to do with the metadata uh, but it was very tricky much beyond the parameters of this tutorial to explain how to do all that so what we can do is that we can use this thing called stencil forge and stencil forge is a sort of place that people made in order to upload their various actor types or behaviors or things that they made they share it with uh, the world and that was very nice of them so if we go to sounds, we could just search this out. Let's see what we had here. We had one called explosion and one called general shooter spacey level. So first let's click explosion. And find explosion. And I just want to download it. Download a resource, explosion, you can test it out. Boom, all right. And that is good. You can see we now have one sound. I'm gonna go back to Stencil Forge and I'm gonna click General, what was it? General Shooter Spacey, that should be good enough. General Shooter Spacey level, double click it, download it, test it out. Sweet. And now I have two sounds right there. And I can save that. And I can close out of it. And then I can close out of that. And I can close out of Stencil Forge as well. So let's see what they have us doing next now that we have imported our sound. Cool. All right, so now we are going to make a scene. And a scene is almost like a level. So like this scene contains all of the characters and sounds that we have used so far. So we'll call this one level one and there actually only will be one level, but you could, if you want to make a level two or a level three, those would all be different scenes in your game. So I'm gonna to go to scenes. This game contains no scenes and I'm just gonna call this level one and just create it. And you will see it right there. And uh, the first thing that we are going to do is that we are going to add our stars in there so that we have the background. So there's a couple different ways of doing this. Um, if, you, if you ever use Photoshop uh, with the layers, this is very similar. We're gonna add different layers to this so that we can control where things are. And I can just add a plus there. And I want a new background layer. The only background I have is stars and I click there, boom. And I have my background right there. Now, if I go up here and I have my palette, these are the different uh, characters and actors and tiles and everything that I can add into my game. So right now it's on tiles, but if I go to actors, I have all the ones that I have imported. And where I put them is where they will be set up for the beginning of the game. So um, you could just click on it and then you add it right there. You could also, if you do these little uh, checkerboard things right there, the grids is the more professional name for them actually, and you hold down shift, they will go like that. And you could put it down. Yeah. All right, I had to do a quick edit there. The reason that I cannot see my guys is because of the layers. I had stars in front of whatever layer I was using. So if I switch this around, and then I add my ship. 
now he will show up right there. And then for my enemy ships, I'll make sure they're nice and evenly distributed. So I'll hold shift and one will go there, skip two, skip two, and skip two. Nah, that's good. So let's say you wanted to get rid of one of these guys. You can either press escape or click on the little arrow. And if you were to click on him, you could just press delete and now he is gone. Or you could move him around or you can make him bigger. It's really up to you how you want to do this. Like these guys were a little, they're over that way and I, I don't really want that. So I want him going right there, right there. Now I want to add another one. I need to use the pencil to add another one right there and right there. Perfect. I'm going to get rid of that grid because I don't like it. Okay, so now we have the start of our game. And let's say we wanted to test the game. All we need to do is we just go to test game. And it will compile and take a couple seconds. And there it is. And if I were to press the arrows to move around, nothing happens because I haven't programmed it but you can see the little animation that is there because that is the default animation of our character. So now, what do we have here? We've added that, we've added that, boom, boom, boom. All right, we did that. All right, let's go to the next part. Okay, so now we are going to actually start programming. We are going to add the sound into our level one. So if you go here to events, uh, this is where you kind of program things to happen. So you have a bunch of different events that if this one thing happens, then you want a bunch of stuff to happen. And you have all these blocks that are um, in like different categories depending on what you want. So the first thing we are going to do is add our theme music. And if you click here on add events and you go to basics, like these are some of the main ones, like when creating and when updating are really essential in designing your game in stencil. So when creating is whenever they first make the game, this will be uh, whatever is inside of that will be done. And if you do the when updating, that is just every time it's 60 frames a second or something like that. Every time it is doing it, it always checks for these conditions that you put inside of there, kind of like an always loop. So for this one, we're gonna do when creating. So whenever the game is created, uh, whatever is inside of here will happen. We're just gonna to go to sound and images and we wanna play a sound and we're gonna choose a sound and that is gonna be our general spacey level shooter thingamajigger gamer thing. And then all we do is test scene And you can see that we have our theme music now. Sweet. Okay. So now what do they have us do here? They We have done that. All right. Cool. And which one? All right. So now we're actually going to make our guy move. And I am going to do this a little different than how they do in the tutorial, just because I think it's simpler to understand. So we need to go to our ship and we need to go to the events in our ship. And I wanna add event basics and when updating. So we are always checking for these conditions and we are going to use these if then statements. So if it is always checking for this, if one thing happens then whatever is inside of this loop will execute. So we are going to have it, if the right arrow is pressed, they are gonna to move to the right. And if the left arrow is pressed, they're gonna to move to the left. And if nothing is pressed, they are not gonna move at all. So we're gonna go down here to user input and we are going to have control is down. So this will be some key and choose control. And we want the right. So if the right key is down, we wanna to go to actor and motion. And we wanna change the X speed with X and we have Y change the X speed, let's change it to 20 for um, self. So that if the right key is pressed, it will set the X speed to 20 for itself, which in this case is the ship because it's inside of that. Now we're gonna go back here 
and we are going to do otherwise if. So if this is not happening, and if this other condition is met, then this will happen. So we want user input, control key, choose control. And this one left is down. Then we want to set the x speed to negative 20 for self. So let's test this out. Let's see if this works. And you can see that he moves. However, oh no, uh, and then he drifts off to drifts off into the vastness of empty space, never to be heard from again, without the spaceships even firing a shot, which is just sad to sad condition. So what we're gonna do is otherwise. So now, if none of these previous two conditions are met, then this is gonna happen. So otherwise, we want to set our x speed to zero for self. So now if we test it, yeah, not enough arguments. What are we talking about? Oh, we didn't set the speed to zero. And take that out and put it back in. Let's test this one more time. Island. And now if I stop it, he goes like that. But if I were to go off of that, oh no, he's still, he's gone. That's, that's, that's no good. So we need to make it so that he cannot leave the screen. And they have you, progr uh, they have you program it one way here using the events, but I am just going to use these things right here, which is called a behavior. So if I go to behavior, uh, behaviors are basically just a collection of events. And they, it's easier sometimes to use these because then you could assign them to, like say you make one behavior with a bunch of events, you could just assign it to a bunch of different characters as well. And you could choose whether or not you want to use a specific event on a character or make a behavior. It's really kind of, um, it's really kind of up to you. You could also make custom behaviors, uh, but we will do that in a bit, but for now, we are just going to choose one from uh, the selection. And if we just, where is this? Is it motion? Uh, cannot exit screen. So if we choose cannot exit screen, uh, now no matter what, he cannot exit the, uh, he cannot exit the screen. So if like say we're to go to edit behavior, like this is just, these events together in this one behavior called cannot exit screen. So now if I go to test my game, boom, he stays right there. Perfect. Cool. All right. What do they have us do now? So we took care of that. All right, so this is them keeping it on the screen. I just kind of, we used the behavior there. All right, now comes the fun part. We get to enable our ship to fire bullets. So we are going to go, we're gonna make another event and we had basics up here before, but we also have input. So we are going to have an input one and this is very similar to, uh, whoops, I messed that up. I was in, you need to make sure you're in the correct tab. Like I was in level one and that's no good. You wanna be in ship. And so this is gonna be very similar to what we did here, um, but just we're gonna do it a different way. So here we're always checking if the right arrow is down, then do something. If the left arrow is down, do something. Uh, but we're gonna add in events. So this is just gonna be when this event happens, when the keyboard is pressed, then something's gonna happen. So we're gonna choose action one, which by default is Z, but you can change it. So when Z is pressed, whatever is happening here uh, will happen. So we want to create an actor type. We wanna create bullets at the 
the x like the x value is going to be x of self so it's always starting at the ship and then the y of self at the front and then we just want to push it so we are going to push the last created actor so we're creating this actor and then we're just going to push that last created actor it's always going to be this guy right here and we're not going to do it gently we're going to do it sharply and x and y like the direction it's relative to the character so like this x zero is just going to be in the middle of him like y uh it's up here so y negative one would be like a little bit up here y 40 would be up here y 200 would be like up here and it really doesn't matter what number we do just as long as it's greater than zero because it's just going to be pushing it that direction so if we're pushing it at 200 it's the same as pushing it at like or uh, negative 200 it's the same as pushing it at like negative 50. so we are going to do x zero and y negative one at 20 fourths so let's test this out. If I press Z, oh, so we have a problem here. These bullets are colliding with my ship and I don't want that. So we, let's go to properties here. See the bullets are not an actor, the bullets are bullets. So we must have messed that up at some point. An enemy ship should be not an actress too. It should be an enemy. Oh, I forgot to do that. The, you need to make sure that you are doing that or else it will not work very well. So let's try this again with the correct groups. Boom, perfect. Sweet. Okay, now what do they have us doing here? All right, we did that, did that. All right, let's go to the next part. All right, so and self, what are they doing here? And self. All right, so we're making sure that when they collide with this enemy ship, uh, that it just gets rid of it. And we're gonna have two events here. So we're gonna go to bullets our events here and we have collisions so when collides with um, actor of type I believe Wait. self hits enemy ship yeah. when self hits enemy ship we just want to kill itself so it will go away kill self is exactly what it sounds like it just completely gets rid of it, blows it up. Well, not it doesn't really blow up, but it just goes away for for a time. And now we are just going to put in where is leave scene. There. Where's that? specific actor and specific actor no that's not what I want oh and all right there we go you to to get rid of the events like you could just actors and the enter or leaves the screen so this one is going to be a specific actor when there when self exits the scene we just want to kill itself too test it out and as it hits the spaceship it should disappear So we also see that those move and what we need to do in order for that not to happen is that we need to make the enemy ship as this. Enemy ship, where is that? 
Oh, there we go. So in collision, you need to make sure it's a sensor so that this, like it picks up the collision, but it doesn't have any physical impact on it. So that if you have it there, it will like just sense it and it won't throw it away like before. So now if I go there, boom, just disappears, cool. Okay, so we got that. All right, now we want to destroy the enemy ship. So now we are going to make sure our bullets actually have the effect of damaging and then ultimately destroying the enemy ship. So I am going to go back here in my collision. And during my collision, not only do I want to have it kill itself, but I also, under behavior here, I want to trigger an event. And what an event will do is it will broadcast this message and then there will be other um, events listening for this message. And when that message happens, it will run through the code. So we are going to call this one hit and we'll add an event later also called hit. And whenever this happens, then the other event will happen. And it's very useful. And you can see these things right here, and these are just the um, like the placeholders. So the first actor, that's just referring to self. And then the actor of type, that is referring to enemy ship. So right here it says self, but if we take it down here and just drag it into there, so it will trigger the event hit in all behaviors for actor of type, which in this case means the enemy ship. So now what do they want us doing after that? All right, we are going to set an attribute. And an attribute is just basically a variable. And we're going to do this with the enemy ship because it's related to it in events. And it's you can create as many attributes as you want. And you can create them with different types. So if we create this one right here, this is going to be a number. Uh, but you can do it with like different actors or booleans, true or falses, or whatever you want. It's just a different type of variable and you just have to name what uh, what data type it is. So I am going to call this one health. And in the beginning, when we create it, we just want to, you have getters and setters, we want to set health to three. And then this will, we're going to check if health is less than zero, we're going to kill ourselves. Well, or the enemy ship will uh, will destroy itself. It's not that depressing. So we are always checking, always, if, and you can just go into here, comparison with less than or equal to. And we can go in here and find our attribute health. So if health is less than or equal to zero, we are going to, where is that? Kill self. All right. So it sets it to three in the beginning, and then if it is less than zero, then it just kills itself. Uh, so now all we want to do is we need to actually, oh, we also want to add in our explosion sound too. I forgot about that. So it's whenever we die, it is going to play that explosion sound from before, and then it is going to kill itself. And now uh, we, are just going to add one more event, and this is going to be an advance. This is going to be the custom event, and then this is going to be the hit. So bullets, it is going to trigger the event hit whenever this happens, and then when that hit happens, it is going to decrement oops, health. So increment goes up, decrement goes down, so it'll go down by one. So when that happens, it starts at three and it will go down by one. So uh, then two, then one, then zero. And then given our event here, if health is less than or equal to zero, it will play the explosion and it will kill self. And then we are going to add, we're gonna add this little visual effect. So apply effect, make negative, and then it's going to wait for 0.1 seconds and then remove that effect. So we go to actor effects. We just want to apply this effect. We want to make it negative. 
but we only want that to happen for a little bit of time. So after 0.1 seconds, manually put that in there and do after 0.1 seconds it is going to just remove all effects from actors so we should have this good right here let's test this out so we have our little then it should go there boom you can see the little negative effect boom Boom, and then it goes away after we hit it three times. Cool, perfect. And I think, is that it for the regular portion of that game? I think it is, let's see. Is there anything else we have? Oh yeah, we have the font. So we also can add text here. And we just go back here and dashboard and fonts. We want to create a new font and you could have a bunch of different types of fonts and then insert them into the game uh, when you want. So we're just going to call this one default our normal font. There. And you could you only have a couple of them right here. If you were to go online and search for fonts and you download a .ttf file, you can choose it from your computer and then upload it there and then that will be whatever font that you want. You could also add it via Stencilforge as well, but just for the sake of time, I'm gonna keep it normal at sans serif. And I'll make this bigger, so it'll be like that. 45, you can change the color. Uh, I found yellow worked well. And you could add the stroke or the shadow. I'm just going to keep it normal like that. And now we are just going to add the conditions that will make us win our game. So there in the scene or level one, there are one, two, three, four ships that we must destroy. So we are going to make a new attribute here called, we'll just call it ships. And this again is going to be a number. And in the beginning, when it's created, we are going to set ship to zero. And we're going to add an event. And when a actor of type dies, is killed, let's choose the actor type. When one of these ships is killed, we are going to, this time we decremented last time, we are I don't know if I'm saying decrement, right? If I'm not, sorry. But we are going to increment. We're gonna increment ship by one. We're gonna add this event right here when drawing. This is very similar to when updating, but given something different with the layers, you if you are to write something, which we're gonna do with our text, you should choose when drawing. For, I'm not exactly sure why, but there is some reason you're supposed to do it like that. So when drawing, we are gonna go down to drawing and we want to go to our styles and we wanna set our font to the one we were using before, which is our default one. And that will allow us to choose from our font that we created before. And if you wanted to make a new one, you could always kind of pick and choose what you want. And we're gonna have an if then statement where if, Comparison. If our if the attribute ship if that equals four, so if we have killed everything, we are just going to say we're going to write you win. Uh, we'll do this at 300, 300. Cool, so let's try this out. This should work. Perfect, and it says you win after we finish all of them. 
And that will do it for the normal part of the tutorial. But if I were to just leave this game as it is, it's a little bit boring. So I want to add a little bit more flair to it. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to have the ships move around just a little bit, just so they're slightly more challenging targets to aim at. I am going to have the ships shoot back so they can defend themselves and defend their honor. And it also makes the game a little bit more interesting. And finally, if they do hit us, I want the game to end, but I want the user to be able to restart by simply clicking a mouse. And that seems like a fair trade-off to me. So the first thing I am going to do is I am going to have the ships go back and forth. And in order to do this, we are going to make our own custom behaviors. And if you recall from before, a behavior is just simply a collection of events. And when we added behaviors before, we did it from within the actor. This time we're going to make our own behaviors, and then we are going to attach them to the actor that we want to attach them to. And there's going to be two types of behaviors, actor behaviors and scene behaviors. And we'll do a little of both. So if you just click there, and I'm going to click here to make a new behavior. And since I am making my character go back and forth, I will call this back and forth. And I will create it. And the first thing I'm going to do is just when it's created, we always need some kind of when creating in there just to get things rolling. Actually, I guess we don't. But for this one, we do. And I just want to make sure that I am setting the speed of myself, setting the X speed to 10 for self. And then I am, oops. I'm going to trigger an event. Now, this is important here. Before you saw there are two types of behaviors, actor behaviors and scene behaviors. We chose to start off with an actor behavior. And if you go to our behavior here, you can see that you can trigger an event in um, a behavior for actors, or you could do it from scenes. Don't mix these up or it won't work. So since I am making an actor behavior, I need to choose it from here. If you choose them from down here, just nothing will happen and you will go crazy from trying to figure out why that happens to be the case. I am not speaking from personal experience. Uh, but, um, all right, so we wanna have this one. We're only gonna do it in a specific behavior Call and that behavior is back and forth. And this behavior is going to cause us to change direction. So I'll just do change underscore dir and that's all that's going to happen it's going to set an initial t um, x speed of 10 and then trigger a, cu a custom event so now i want to go to that custom event and when change dir happens what we want to do is we want to have it change direction so we want to again go to set x speed to a certain value for itself, but we don't just want to put a value in there because we want it to re, uh, we want it to be reversed. So if his speed is 10 going to the right, we want it to be negative 10, and if it's negative 10, we want it to be 10. So in other words, we want to multiply it by negative one, and there's a simple way of doing that here, and that's just the negate function, which oh, right there. So if we negate something, we just basically multiply it by negative one, and we want to negate. the x speed of the actor. Cool. And then after it is negated, like we don't want it just going on forever. Like we want to figure out how long we want that to, uh, speed to be going at a certain distance and then we'll change it. So we want to go to our little wait block here and we want to, after a random value, so it kind of mixes it up a little bit between 0.5 and 1.5. I believe those are rounded too, so it's not exactly uh, accurate here, but this seems to do the trick for me. Uh, we want to just trigger that event again, again, for the actor, just like we had up there or over here. We want to trigger the event change dir in behavior back and forth. So it will actually call itself. 
All right, so it will, after a certain amount of time, it will trigger the direction, and then it will just go, whoops, it will just go back to the top of this, and it will just keep on going. So let's just test this out really quick. it is not working. And that is because we just have this behavior and we never attached it to the actor type. So if I go attach the actor type, I want my enemy ships to have this behavior. And now you can see we are in the enemy ships and they have this back and forth behavior, just like the ships do with the canna exit scene that we had before. Now let's try this out. Perfect. You can see that one guy just went away. He, he, oh no. And so we could, like before, we could use our cannot exit scene. Uh, but the only problem with that is that once it gets to the edge of the scene, it will just stop and kind of freeze there. So we can't exactly do it. We need to make some changes to it. But since that code has already been written for us, let's just peek inside there and then see if we could take out the parts that we want and do a few modifications to it. So if I have my behavior right there, so if I go to can I exit scene and I click on it like that, you can go down here and edit it. And this is what the can I exit scene is made up of. It's created and then this whole thing happens. It has X and Y and X and Y. So I am just going to actually take this and I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna to go to my back and forth behavior. I am going to add an event. And just, we always want this happening. We always want for looking, or we always want it to be looking for if it is going out of that scene. Oops, you can't do command V and all that. All right, so the t we only want two of these because we're not really concerned about Y because um, our Y is always constant. So I am just going to get my two X's and oops, and I am going to throw my Y's in the trash like that. Yeah. So let's take a look at this top one. This is the simpler one to get started with. So if the X, I could just switch this. Uh, they have this set up so it's like with the camera so that if you're in a scrolling game and your camera is moving, it will still work. But since our camera is always constant, I'm just going to simplify this a little bit. Um, if the X of self, if it is less than zero, then we just want to set X to zero. We want to set X to zero and then we want to trigger that event, that change direction event. Change DIR in behavior, back and forth. And so if it detects that, remember X, uh, the furthest to the left of the screen it could be is zero. So if it happens to get less than zero, it will make sure, whoa, 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 stop, man, man, don't go less than zero. Not only don't go less than zero, I'm gonna pick you up and I'm gonna put you onto zero. And then I am going to trigger the event that causes you were going left at negative 10. Now you're at zero and you are going to be negated, go positive 10, and then it will go the other way. We always want that check-in for that. And throw my extra stuff out of the way. We don't need the X speed because that's already taken care of. This one is a bit more complicated, but we could still get it. So if the X, we don't need that on screen, of self plus the width of self. So it's gonna be measuring uh, from the left side there. And if it is further to the right, so if it is um, a certain amount to the right, that X value increases, plus however wide that character is, if it is greater than the width of the screen, so we'll figure that out, then we want the same thing to happen. We can get rid of X speed because we're going to be taking care of that. We want to set X to whatever the X value is. Where's actor? To X of to X of self plus the screen width minus the screen of width for self. 
and that will cause it to be right there on that right edge. And am I missing anything? Set X of self plus square Yeah, that should be good. And then we just want to trigger the events, change direction. Oops, that was, it's annoying that they don't have those events in there too. Change the IR and in back and forth because you could always get some spelling mistake. Ah, it's just nice to have it. Get in there, man. All right. Cool. Just nice to have it like that. All right, so this should work. Let's test it out. And then bounce right off that wall. Great. Perfect. Cool. All right. So we have our ships going back and forth. Uh, now that they are going back and forth, let's have them shoot down at us to make this game even more challenging. So first thing I need to do is I need another actor just because having my bullets and just trying to switch those around is difficult so if i just control click and duplicate this actor type i got bullets copy and let's go into bullets copy and mess around with it a bit so first thing i want to do with bullets copy is doesn't sound good so i am going to name this enemy bullet and i need to change the group so i need to create a new group i will call this enemy bullet create and i want this only interacting with the player. So I don't want it um, colliding with the actor or the other bullets or nothing but that ship. So go down here, click OK. And I want to get rid of these events because they don't apply to me at all. Boom, boom. They have the same physics. That is good. If you want, you could mess around with the looks of those so they change a little. But I am just going to keep them like that. And I'm just going to save that. Cool. Um, I do need to change something at the ship. I was playing around with this earlier and noticed that the group was wrong. I have him in actors and he should be in players. So, cause if he doesn't, if the ship is not, or if the players are not colliding with the enemy bullets, then we have problems. So in order to have them ship, uh, the, to, in order to have them shoot, I am going to make another actor behavior and I'm going to call this enemy shoot. Let me create that. Cool. And just like before, when it's created, we just want to start broadcasting that event. So when created, all I am going to do is trigger an event, shoot, behavior name, Enemy shoot. Cool. And just one more. We're going to go down here to our custom event. And when shoot happens, this is going to work just like uh, the enemy one, where we are going to create an actor, or just like the ship shooting there. We are going to create an actor type. In this case, it is going to be. I right, shouldn't still be bullets copy, but. Why is it still bullets copy? Do I need to save it? Why is it still bullets copy? Enemy bullet. Oh, I guess I gotta click on rename after type. There we go, that's better. Okay, enemy shoot. Let's try this again. Enemy bullet. There we go. That's better. At this is going to be attached to the enemy ship, so this is going to be the X and Y of self. Self. X of self. Er, X of self and Y of self. And then once we get that, we are just going to push that actor. Not gently, but sharply. And extra, uh, we want it going. We don't want it going to the left or right, so it's going to be x zero. And then we want to go down, so it will be y. And this will be 
24s. And just like before, where we are going to wait a random amount of time, so after a random value, so it doesn't get predictable, between 1 and 3, we are going to broadcast that again. We're going to trigger that event. Trigger the event. Err, uh, I was forget that. Trigger the event shoot and behavior back and forth. And that should not be back and forth. That should be enemy shoot. That is the behavior that we are working in. Um, <laughs> we should also, this should not be self. We are not, so we are going to be attaching this to the enemy ship. So if we were to push ourselves sharply, towards uh, the down direction, it would just create the enemy bullets and then push the ships down, which is clearly not what we want. So we want to do the last created actor, and we also want to do the last created actor. And finally, we just wanted to attach this to the enemy ship. Cool, so it has both of those, and now let's see if this works. Cool, great, and let's keep on going. Well, that's a problem. All right, so uh, right now it is just stopping. So let's see, what would trigger event shoot in behavior? Oh, that should be self. Okay, trigger event shoot, yeah, so that will, all right. Oops, let's try this again. There we go, sweet. All right, but you can see I could just, these bullets have no effect on me. I am, I'm, a, I'm a mortal, and that doesn't make for a very exciting game. So we want to switch this up a little bit, and let's go to ship and behaviors, and let's add a collide. So when I collide, when self collides with enemy bullets, we want to kill ourselves, or kill the ship. And one more thing that we want to do, uh, we are going to need to determine if this ship is alive across several, um, across several different actors. So we are going to make it need to make a new attribute, but it's not going to be like the ones we did before, where it's all contained within that actor. We need to make a global attribute, a game attribute as they call it. And I'm going to call this ship is alive. And ship is alive can either be true or false, so it's going to be a Boolean. We'll set the initial value to true. And now anywhere I am in the game, I have my game attribute, and this will be there, so across any actor. So when I get hit, I just want to set ship is alive to false. Boom. Okay, and we are going to have one more thing. We just want to be able to restart the game when you do eventually lose. And normally I would test all this stuff out, but just I kind of want to keep this around an hour and uh, I don't want to go crazy uh, spending time testing everything, but you should definitely test everything you do. That is good advice. And if we have some huge bug down the road, that will be the cause of it. But. So I am just going to have one more behavior, and this one is going to be a scene behavior because it is being applied to the entire scene and not to a specific actor. So we are going to call this one restart game. And there's gonna be two events in this behavior. One is going to display the text that uh, says you should click to restart. And then the other one is just going to have the actual code that makes it restart upon your clicking. So for the drawing one, when we're drawing, we always want to do when drawing. And we are going to check if ship is alive, if that attribute, oops, I could just do this, can't I? If, or game attributes, if ship is alive, Oops, that's not how you want to do it. You want to do the equals one first. Ch -ch -ch. Uh, uh, um. There we go. 
go it's inside of there if ship is alive if that equals false then we want to display set that font just like we did before set it to the fault and then we want to draw you lose ha 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 click to restart and I was playing around with this before and I had it at X 10 and Y 300 feel around the fiddle with that how you want finally let's have the actual mechanics here so always we only want this happening if ship is alive is false so if if our game attribute Boolean game attributes if ship is alive if that equals false and we want it so just that when this message is displayed if the user clicks the mouse then it will restart the level so if our mouse is down we go bit down here to input if mouse is down so this will this is a nested if then condition right here where this if then statement will only happen if the ship is alive. So if the ship is alive, every single time they go through uh, that frame, if the ship is alive, or if the ship is not alive, then they will check for this condition. If ship is alive equals true, then this won't happen. They'll just skip over this and go on to the next thing that they have to do. So if mouse is down, we just wanna restart everything. So we first want to make sure when we restart the level, that we set ship, ship is alive back to true or that display won't go away or it'll keep on showing up. So if that is true, then all we want to do, where is this one again? Behavior, no. Uh -oh. See, that should be here. Oh, game put. Okay, we want to reload the level. And well, there's a little crossfade effect. If you don't want that, you can just put a zero in here. But I kind of like it. So I am going to put it in there. And hopefully, I'm going to test this game out. And if all is going to find the plan, we are done with our game. So let's see this here. Boom, boom. Oh, nothing happened. All right, so something I am not colliding with those bullets. So let's see if we could figure out why that is. Let's see, where are our enemy bullets? Let's check the groups. Yep, all right. We want this to be the enemy bullet. Now let's try this. So I collided with that, but I never attached this to the scene. There we go. All the little things, all the little bugs that you get when you don't thoroughly test it throughout the game. So one more time. Hey, good. And now I'm going to click, get a little crossfade, and whoops, <laughs> try that again. There we go. And boom. All right. Oh, no. Boom. All right. And one more thing. There was like one of my guys disappeared, and that's not the first time I've noticed that. So I just want to switch up one more thing in back and forth. Right here it says screen width. And we just want to replace that with screen width pixels. I believe that was the reason that that was happening. Same thing with this one right here. Screen width pixels. Okay. And that should do it for the game. The only thing left now is to share it. So if you were to publish it for, say you could do um, Flash or HTML5 or for the Chrome Web Store or for Stencil Forge to share it with the other people there. So let's say I want to do it for Flash. And you compile it. Boom, boom, Space Invaders. 
onto my desktop. Just save that. My game has been exported. And then I can just double click on that and it will open up right there. Cool. So that is the first tutorial on uh, Stencil. Just going over uh, that first or the second crash course. I hope that was helpful. And join us for our second one where we will make um, a version of Flappy Bird. All right. So I hope that was helpful and have a good one. Later.